All right, so good afternoon to everyone. When I started this to my colleagues, uh, as I ask you to please rise. Before we begin, I want to take a moment for us to recognize the passing late last month of FDNY Officer Ray Pfeiffer. Officer Pfeiffer retired from Engine 40, Ladder 35 in 2014 after serving the city of New York for nearly 28 years, including as a member of the response team on 9-11 and in the months following. Officer Pfeiffer was a tireless advocate for the passing of the Zadroga 9-11 Health and Compensation Act, which works to protect and provide for first responders like himself who suffered and continue to suffer from the ill health effects of having worked on site at Ground Zero. We thank Officer Pfeiffer for his years of service and our thoughts are with his family at this time, so I would like us to join in a moment of silence. Thank you, my colleagues. So today is going to uh, be, and hopefully will be, a fairly short stated meeting as we review one item of legislation and several resolutions regarding home rules and happenings at the state level. As our legislative calendar ends next Wednesday, we are moving to provide our partners in the state government with an opportunity to pass these bills in a timely manner. First, introduction 1263A, sponsored by Council Member Danny Drum, which would require the results of school cafeteria inspections to be posted online on the Department of Education website. This is the one piece of legislation that we will be considering today. Um, so these would be posted, these inspections will be posted online on the Department of Education website for public schools or the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene website for private schools. Council Member Drum also chairs our Education Committee as the lead sponsor of this bill, and he will say a few words. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, uh, and I deeply appreciate all the work that you've done to uh, move this legislation quickly and swiftly. This legislation would provide information, vitally important information, to parents about the quality of the food and the conditions of the school cafeterias. As uh, the number one prepared food vendor in the city of New York, the Department of Education uh, deserves uh, and um, should be required to present parents with information about the conditions in those school cafeterias. So, and I'm also pleased that we are moving this legislation here in our city council and where we um, have um, a say in what happens in our New York City Department of Education as opposed to having outsiders come in and tell us how to run our schools or how to um, um, inspect our cafeterias or what information our parents should have about the conditions of those cafeterias. So, uh, again, I am thankful to you. I'm thankful to Chair uh, Corey Johnson as well for passing this legislation and to the members of the committee. And I look forward to the passage of this legislation today so that the parents may know uh, the condition of school cafeterias. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member. And next, the Council will vote on six state legislation resolutions and one communication from the Mayor. State Legislation Resolution 5-17 requires requests the New York State Legislature to pass bills introduced by State Senator Martin Golden, Martin Golden and State Assembly Member Herman Farrell in an act to amend the real property tax law in relation to the determination of adjusted base proportions in special assessing units which are cities for the fiscal year 2018. The effect of this change will be to reduce the amount by which the current base proportions for any class is allowed to grow. State Legislation Resolution 6-17 requests the State Legislature to pass bills introduced by State Senator Golden, State Assembly Member Abate, an act to amend the Administrative Code of the City of New York in relation to providing awards to spouses of emergency medical technicians and advanced emergency medical technicians who are killed while, are killed while engaged in discharge of, the duty, of their duty. This bill would create a death benefit for the surviving spouses of EMTs employed by the FDNY who are killed while engaged in the performance of their duties. State Legislation Resolution 7-17 requests the State Legislature to pass bills introduced by Senator Golzin and Assemblymember Denzecker, an act to amend the Retirement 
and Social Security law and the general municipal law in relation to pension benefits of widows or widowers of sanitation workers. This bill would make the widows and widowers of sanitation workers who are killed in the line of duty due to accidents eligible to receive accidental death benefits as are afforded to the surviving spouses of other uniform services. State Legislation Resolution 8-17 requests the State Legislature to pass bills uh, introduced in the, in the Senate and in the Assembly, an act authorizing the City of New York to discontinue parkland for the purpose of construction. Give me one second. Where's the last? Okay, got it. Sorry. Um, an act authorizing the City of New York to discontinue parkland for the purpose of construction and operation of a pre-kindergarten center with a focus on instruction in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. This legislation will provide New York City the authority to discontinue the use as parkland of certain parkland in Flushing Meadow Park in order to permit the construction of a new pre-K facility in the proximity of the New York Hall of Science. State Legislation Resolution 9-17 requests the state's legislature to pass bills introduced by State Senator Jose Serrano and State Assembly Member Latoya Joyner, an act to authorize the City of New York to discontinue the use as parkland of a portion of Corporal Fisher Park in the borough of the Bronx and to sell and convey such land upon terms and conditions to facilitate the construction of affordable housing. This legislation will provide New York City the authority to discontinue the use as parkland uh, of Corporal Fisher Park in the Bronx for the purposes of creating a housing complex where 100% of the units will be classified as affordable housing. State Legislation Resolution 10-17 requests the State Legislature to pass bills introduced by State Senator Serrano and State Assembly Member Benedetto, an act in relation to authorizing discontinuance of the use as parkland of land in the City of New York, commonly known as Marx Brothers Playground. This is actually in my district. This legislation will provide New York City the authority to discontinue the use as parkland of Marx Brothers Playground and to transfer such land to the New York City Educational Construction Fund to permit the construction of a combined occupancy structure that will include several schools uh, and the parkland will be replaced. Finally, the council will vote on Mayor's Message 520-17, requesting the state legislature to pass bills introduced by state uh, in the state and in the assembly, in the state senate and in the assembly which relate to amending several laws in order to allow for the expansion of the school speed safety cameras program. Seeing this legislation pass is a vital public safety measure. Speed cameras make our streets safer and help save lives. Over the next three years, installing 150 more speed cameras along school zones throughout the city will protect drivers, shield pedestrians, and safeguard young people from the dangers of unchecked speed. From lowering speed limits to spearheading critical vision zero legislation, this council has made strengthening street safety a top priority. I am proud of this resolution. I really want to thank the leadership of my colleagues, uh, in particular our Chair of Transportation, Idanis Rodriguez, and our Majority Leader, Jimmy Van Bremer, uh, who is sponsoring this, how, uh, this uh, resolution. Uh, really proud of everyone in this council for championing our successful efforts by working to bring more oversight to the streets of New York City through the installation of additional cameras. I do want to recognize that we have here in the balcony um, Amy Cohen, who lost her son Sammy, and Hank Miller, who lost his sister Victoria Nicodemus. There's other families here represented and advocates who supported this measure, who are strong, strong advocates. They're here with us in the balcony. If we could recognize them. Um, inc obviously incredible advocacy on their behalf, uh, very painful, obviously any time that they have to um, talk about this tragic situation. Uh, and so we thank them for that. It really means a lot that they're here with us today. So that, again, I thank my colleagues and uh, ask for support on all of these measures. And with that, I end communication from the speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Discussion of general orders. Going once, going twice. Okay, seeing none. Um, report of supplemental report of special committees. None. 
Supplemental reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Health, intro 1233A, exotic animal circus performances. Amended and laid over. Intro 1263A, food service inspections in schools. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on State and Federal Legislation, pre-considered SLR 5, adjusted base proportions. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered SLR 6, awards to spouses of emergency medical technicians. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered SLR 7, pension benefits. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered SLR 8, parkland repurpose. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered SLR 9, Corporal Fisher Park. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered SLR 10, Marks Brothers Playground. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered M520, School Speed Cameras. Coupled on general orders. On the supplemental general order. Calendar intro 709A, Youth Workforce Development Program. Lead over. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled on general orders, and I ask for a roll call on all items on the general order calendar. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you very much. I'm concerned about some of the pre-considered legislation that we're voting on today. I see that pre-considered SLR 10 does, in fact, have provision that that parkland will be transferred to another location. I understand that SLR 9 is two lots, one of which will be um, developed and the other will be given up as parkland. And in number eight, SLR eight, I don't see that there's any provision to maintain it parkland. I'm very concerned about loss of parkland. I think that there should have been provision so that we don't lose any of our parkland. So I'm voting aye on all with the exception of pre-considered SL nine and pre-considered SLR eight. Thank you. Borelli. I and all except M520. Cabrera. I and all. Chin. I and all. Cohen. I and all. Constantinides. I and all. Carnegie. I and all. <laughs> Deutsch. Uh, no one 520 F17 and I and the rest. Drum. I on all with the exception of uh, pre-considered SLR 8, and I vote no on SLR 8. Espinel. I vote aye. Eugene. I vote aye. Gentili. I on all. Gibson. I on all. Greenfield. I on all with the exception of M520. Gordenchik. I and all, with the exception of M520. Johnson. I want to congratulate Danny Drum on the legislation today for cafeteria inspections. I'm glad that the council is doing this and not the state legislature, and I vote aye on all. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote on M520? Gentilly. Permission? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead. I support M520 at PS 158 at York and 78th Street. I've had fatalities in 2014, 2016, 2017. At York Avenue and 79th Street, just a block away, another fatality in 2011. Uh, within a block of middle school 114 in my district, we've had fatalities in 2011, 2012, 2013, 2016. Uh, we need to pass this legislation, and we actually need to put these speed cameras in my district. Uh, for those reasons, I support this legislation. I made comments regarding the other legislation in the committee vote, and I vote aye on all. King. Aye on all. Ku. Aye on all. Kozlowitz. Abstain on M520 and aye on all. Crowley. Aye on all. Lanceman. May I explain my vote? Yes, you may. Um, there is a role for speed cameras, and I voted for the original round of speed cameras. Um, but before we expand the number of speed cameras significantly in the city, I do believe there needs to be a thoughtful examination of the current program, the need for expansion, and how that expansion will be implemented. It is an issue that has raised uh, a number of concerns in my district, 
uh, particularly regarding the placement of some of the speed cameras and the nature of the administration's negotiations with folks up in Albany has not given, in my view, this council an ability to have that thorough and open examination. So I will be voting no on M520 um, with the hope that down the road we can have a serious conversation about the best way to implement uh, and potentially expand a speed camera program. With that, I vote aye on all except for M520, and I vote no on that. Lander. With deep gratitude to the advocacy for families for safe streets and helping win something that will truly save lives, I vote aye on all. Levin. Permission to explain my vote? Yes, go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, I want to vote aye on all, and with regard to M520, uh, the fact of the matter is that speeding kills. Um, and without effective enforcement, um, people will continue to speed uh, here in New York City. And I, I, I ask anybody that drives a car that's listening right now uh, to conduct an experiment. Try going the speed limit. Look at your speedometer as you're driving. Go 25 miles an hour uh, on, on uh, an artery. In my district, on Meeker Avenue, on Atlantic Avenue, on McGinnis Boulevard, and see what drivers behind you do. Uh, they honk at you, they go around you. Uh, we need to slow down in New York City. We are all going to get to where we need to go. But the fact of the matter is nobody needs to go 35 miles an hour, 45 miles an hour, 55 miles an hour on New York City streets. It's unnecessary, it's over the speed limit, it is dangerous, and it kills. That needs to be the message. Speeding kills. So I enthusiastically support M520. I vote aye on all, and I want to thank my colleagues at Family for Safe Streets for their important advocacy on this. Thank you. Levine. Aye on all. Mizell. Mealy. Aye on all. Menchaca. Aye on all. Miller. I don't know, except for SLR 8 and 9, I'll be abstaining. Palma. Perkins. I don't know. Reynoso. I vote aye. Richards. I vote aye. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. First of all, congratulations to Majority Leader Jimmy Brown Bramer, and thank you for your work. It Thank you to the family for Save S3 and TA, and Speaker Melissa Maverito. You and the mayor have been, you know, great leaders in many issues, but especially when it comes to Vision Zero. Uh, in your leader, when, with your leadership, we are doing the whole rules, something that is so critical because a speed camera is not about making money. Speed camera is about saving lives. And we have seen how speed camera has been so important for our children going to school. And I'm so happy to see this on rule pass uh, with your support and your leadership. And I know that this is only one or more than 25 law that we have passed at this council with your support and leadership related to Vision Zero. Thank you. And now with, with that, I vote aye. Rose. Uh, permission to explain my vote. I'm voting yes. aye yes, on. You Thank you. I'm, I'm voting aye on all items on today's agenda. And I would like to amend my vote on M499 and resolutions 1534 and 1535 from the June 6th agenda from a no to a yes vote. Thank you. Rosenthal. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. I vote aye, I very proudly vote aye on all and in particular support M520. I wish my last name started with A, so I could have said this uh, before my colleagues spoke. But I will tell you, as an alum of OMB, having worked there for seven years, in no way is this a revenue-generating proposal. At OMB, when we talk about these things and we talk about revenues to the, to the, that could come in from stuff like this, it doesn't count toward an agency's savings goal. So the cynical point of view that this is simply uh, to generate revenue for the city uh, is not true. And secondly, uh, I would like to say that 
we know this is about uh, getting people to slow down because not only will there be a speed camera, there will also be a sign placed in front of the camera well in advance to tell people that there's a speed camera. If this were some sort of hoax to raise money for the city, why would they put up a sign saying slow down? This is a, and, and I would like to add that to those who are listening to the noise out there about you know, how the mayor handled this, uh, whether in Albany or with us, I'm not impressed with his behavior either, but that is noise. The point of this bill and this home rule is to make sure that we keep people from getting killed by cars. That's it. It's a simple, simple idea. I'm so relieved that the state is finally going to allow us more speed cameras. It's outrageous that we have to go to the state to ask for speed cameras. Um, Council member? Yeah, I vote aye on all proudly. Thank you. Salamanca. Aye on all. Torres. Aye on all. Traeger. I'm pleased that uh, Albany and our leaders have heard us that uh, no children cross highway exit ramps, and uh, I vote aye on all. Mendez. Permission to explain my vote? Yes, go ahead. I vote aye on all, and I want to add uh, my um, consensus to what my colleague, Council Member Rosenthal, was saying. Um, you know, I've lost a few school children in my district near schools or walking to an after school program, and so speed cameras will save lives. There will be signs advising the public about it. There are signs advising when you're near a school building. This will go a long way to making our city safer, and I am proud that we are voting on this bill today. Thank you very much. Vaca. I vote aye on all. Valone. Aye on all except abstain on M520 and no on SLR 8, 9, and 10. Williams. I vote. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I came into uh, with the intention of voting no on 520. I'm going to change my vote to an abstention based on some of the things I heard here and some data that was presented to me. But I still uh, am not convinced that we have done the right efficacy research on the ones that exist uh, versus revenue and the types of deaths that have occurred. Uh, my prayers are with the victims' families, and many people are going to portray this as if uh, some of us who are voting against it don't care, and that's just absolutely not true. I just want to make sure what we're doing uh, is having the proper impact uh, versus uh, possible revenue raising. I don't think that occurred here, and I hope the mayor in the future does a better job of engaging this council uh, with what's going on in this entire city and has a better discussion. I abstain on M520 and I and all the rest. Wills. May I explain my vote? Yes, you may. Um, listening to Councilmember Rosenthal eloquently state her position, um, I do support the legislation, but Councilman Lanceman and Jamani Williams also have points. Uh, I think there should be more input with the council, so I vote aye on all, but I, abs I abstain from M520. Matteo. No on 520, I and the rest. Ben Bramer. Permission to briefly explain my vote. You I may. just want to thank uh, our speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito, for her courage in seeing this through. Uh, this is a resolution that I've been proud uh, to sponsor. And along with our chair, Idanis Rodriguez, this council has really been at the forefront of the Vision Zero movement. I, too, uh, have lost children uh, in my district who were killed in crashes. Uh, and in Woodside, Queens, just a couple of years ago, Noshad Nahian was eight years old uh, when his sister was walking him across the street on Northern Boulevard. He was run over uh, by a truck and killed. Uh, we should never have to do what I did, which is to look at his mother uh, and listen to her talk about her son, who she will never see again. That's what this is about, pure and simple, saving lives of children in our city and our state. And I'm very, very proud. Thank you. I vote all. I and all. 
Speaker Mark Viverito. I vote aye. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of M520, which is adopted by a vote of 37 in the affirmative, six in the negative, and four abstentions. And SLR8, which was adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, three in the negative, and one abstention. And SLR9, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, two in the negative, and one abstention. And M499 and Reso 1534 and Reso 1535, which is revised uh, by a vote of 49 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions. And SLR10, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and zero abstentions. Introduction and reading of bills. Supplemental, okay, all items are attached uh, and uh, sent to the appropriate committees as indicated on the agenda. Uh, supplemental resolutions, seeing none. Okay, what, we have one more. Okay, a correction, a correction on the vote tally for SRLR 10. Uh, SRL 10 was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and zero abstentions. Okay, so we, uh, right, general discussion. We have uh, first on our list, uh, uh, Council Member Espinal. I'll make this brief so we all can get out of here, but this is very important. Um, nightlife in New York City has been under attack for a very long time to the point where we're really losing uh, the cultural capital that it has created uh, for New York City. You know, everyone uh, who looks at New York sees it as, as a city that never sleeps because of all the bars and the music venues and all of the artists that came out of the city. And they feel that the city has been imposing a lot of legislation and a lot of rules that have been onerous on their businesses, which is why I am introducing intro 1648. I am very excited to introduce this bill. It will create the office of the night mayor not nightmare, night mayor, and the night mayor uh, will be an office that will be solely in charge of working with the communities, working with the, night, with the night venues, and working with the city and finding ways where we all can coexist without uh, putting a burden on the cultural institutions that we have in our city. Um, this is something that I've been working on for over a year, and I hope that it'll be a, a, a time where we can talk about what really makes this uh, city breathe and is the nightlife venues in our city. So I really ask all my colleagues to please sign on uh, to intro 1648. In order for New York City to be the city that it has been for decades, we have to step up and do something to protect our night venues. And um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that I'm very, very uh, proud of introducing, very, something that's very personal to me. Uh, you know, it's, it's a place where I've spent a lot of my time being someone who's very introverted. Uh, these spaces gave me an opportunity to express myself in ways that I haven't been able to. And we have a lot of New Yorkers who feel the same exact way. And they're counting on the support from our city to keep these venues alive. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Espinal. Any others for general discussion? Councilmember Barron? Uh, thank you. I want to call my colleagues' attention to pre-considered Reso 1559, which calls on the state legislator to pass and the governor to sign Assembly Bill 611, Senate Bill 5122, an act to establish a private student loan refinance task force. And this task force would bring together the state controller, the higher education service corporate, corporation, and private lending institutions in New York State to study and report the ways in which those lending institutions can be incentivized to create student loan refinancing programs. The rising cost of college education and the rising debt that students have incurred is continuing to rise. From 2009 to 2014, the federal rate has more than doubled. In New York State, the student loan debt has more than doubled between 2006 and 2015. 
So in light of this astronomical burden, which can prevent students from completing school, from becoming homeowners, from qualifying for auto loans and starting small businesses and saving for the future, it's unclear how we can expect a younger generation. Let's have some order, please. Let's have some order. Thank you. To be prepared to be able to claim their position in the future. So I invite my colleagues to read the bill and to sign on to Resolution 1559. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Barron. Councilmember Williams. Thank you. Uh, I just want to ask my colleagues to continue. Let's have some order, please. Have some order. Uh, keep the uh, Sergeant Vebe in uh, in their prayers. That is an officer uh, who is still in uh, serious condition in Kings County. He does have a GoFundMe page, so people can uh, take the time to spread that GoFundMe page around and as well uh, help the family out. Also, my continued thoughts and prayers with Representative Steve Scalise, uh, two members of the Capitol Police, and a congressional aide uh, who were uh, shot yesterday in Alexandria. Uh, there was a young, there was a, a man shot uh, by an uh, innocent bandit in the shot at Barclays, and also a mass shooting at a UPS uh, package sorting facility in San Francisco. And we just passed the one year anniversary of the Orlando Pulse shooting. This year alone, we have 159 mass shootings. That is just this year alone. And more than 27,000 shooting instances. That is just this year alone. And it makes me wonder what will have to happen for Congress to push back against the NRA. And there are many, many NRA members who agree with the common sense legislation that is before Congress and realize that access to guns coupled with this country's penchant for violence and actually almost demonic resolve that they must have access to any and every kind of firearm as a recipe for da disaster, one which we've seen out played out yesterday and so many times previously. The time is to act right now. There are bills that may get passed in Congress to make it worse. Uh, is a, one of them that got postponed is to make it easier to access silencers. I do not understand what part of the Second Amendment means that you have to have a silencer on your gun. It is going from bad to worse. The time to act is now. We are the city council. We are very good on these issues. My hope is that the rest of the country will catch up to us very soon. Thank you, Councilmember Williams. Any others for general discussion? Seeing none, we turn it to our speaker for concluding remarks. Thank you, and just as, uh, as I was going to close out, and I thank Councilmember Williams for reminding us of these unfortunate incidents in this last day of the Virginia shooting and the San Francisco, where uh, three are dead as a result of an action taken by an individual with access to a gun. Obviously, we all know that violence in any type is unacceptable. Uh, and the issue of gun violence continues to be pervasive and an epidemic, and we need to do something about it. Keeping everyone in our thoughts and prayers, uh, hoping for the best for everyone, and obviously thoughts to those that have um, lost loved ones, uh, and particularly in the San Francisco shooting. Uh, to, so, so we are going to wrap up, and just to know that we will still be in recess, and uh, thank all my colleagues for their diligence today. And with that, uh, we are in recess. This meeting is recessed to further notice.